This is a tutorial on factoring using all methods. When we're given a polynomial to factor, there's several methods to factor that polynomial, but not all of them work for every polynomial. But there's some steps we can use to make sure we always use the correct factoring method. The first step is to always look for a greatest common factor. If you have one and you take it out or factor it out, What's remaining is usually much easier to factor using the other methods. The next step is to look for special products like difference of squares or perfect square trinomials. If you can recognize a polynomial as a difference of squares or a perfect square trinomial, then factoring becomes very easy. You just plug it into the formula that describes the difference of squares or perfect square trinomials. If you have more than three terms in a polynomial, especially if you have an even set of terms in a polynomial, you can try factoring by grouping. Factoring by grouping doesn't always work, but it's very easy if it does. And if none of these first three methods work, then you should try binomial factoring. So let's look at this polynomial. Here we have 6x squared minus 14x plus 4. Now our first step is to find a greatest common factor, if possible. Well, I can divide all of these terms by 2. So I'm going to factor out a 2. I'll have 2 times 3x squared minus 7x plus 2. So I've factored out my greatest common factor. Now I want to look for perfect squares or difference of squares. Well, my 3x squared is not a perfect square and neither is my 2. So difference in perfect square trinomials are not going to work here. We don't have more than three terms, so we're not going to use factoring by grouping. So now we're stuck with binomial factoring. So we look at our 3x squared. I have a positive leading coefficient here of 3, so I'm only going to consider the positive versions of those factors. In this case, my only factors of 3 are 3 and 1. And then I go to my last constant term here of 2, and I need factors of 2. Now remember, when we do my binomial factoring, we have to get two numbers multiplied together that equal 2. Well, if we multiply two numbers together and get a positive 2, that means we're multiplying either a positive number times a positive number or a negative number times a negative number because there's no other way to get a positive 2 by multiplying two numbers. If we go and look at our linear term here, we have a negative 7. Now because this is negative, that means we have some negative numbers involved in our factoring here, which means I'm only going to consider the negative versions of my factors of 2. Well, the only way I can get 2 using negative numbers is to take negative 1 and multiply it by negative 2. Now I need a combination of these two sets of numbers that will add together to get us negative 7. I'm going to use 3 times negative 2 and then 1 times negative 1. If I do that, we'll have 3 times negative 2 and we'll be adding that to 1 times negative 1. Well, 3 times negative 2 is negative 6 and we're going to add that to 1 times negative 1 or negative 1. Negative 6 plus negative 1 is negative 7, which is the coefficient we were looking for. So that means my factors are going to be 3 and 1 on the x. And I'm multiplying my 3 by negative 2, so the negative 2 is going to go in the other binomial. So this is going to be 1x minus 2 and 3x minus 1. This is all still multiplied by 2. Now I look at my binomials here. I cannot factor them any further. There's no greatest common factor. So, my final form would be 2 times 3x minus 1 times x minus 2. Let's try another example. Here I have 2x cubed plus 2x squared minus 24x. Well, right off the bat I notice there's an x in every term, which means my greatest common factor is x. But there's also a 2 in every term. I can divide all of these by 2. So I'm going to factor out 
a 2x. If I factor out a 2x, I'll be left with x squared plus x minus, well, 24 divided by 2 is 12, and the x is taken out. So our first step was to find a greatest common factor, and we found one. It was 2x, and what's left inside the parentheses is x squared plus x minus 12. Now I look at this x squared plus x minus 12, and I think this can be factored further. It doesn't have a greatest common factor. It's not a perfect square. So I'm going to have to use binomial factoring. I have a 1 out here, and the only way I can get a factor of 1 is to multiply 1 times 1. So we're not even going to worry about those factors, because anything times 1 is itself. So I need to look at this negative 12. Ways I can get negative 12 would be negative 1 and positive 12, 1 and negative 12, 2 and negative 6, negative 2 and 6, and negative 3 and 4, or 3 and negative 4. Now, I need a set of these numbers that will add together to get us a positive 1. Well, the pair that work are 4 and negative 3. If I multiply 4 and negative 3, I get negative 12. If I add them, I get a positive 1. So my factors then, I have 1's on my x's, so this is just x and x, and then it'll be minus 3 and positive 4. Now don't forget that we factored out a 2x earlier, so that's going to come out here on the outside. And my factored form of 2x cubed plus 2x squared minus 24x is 2x times x minus 3 times x plus 4. Let's look at one more example. Here we have 5x cubed plus 2x squared minus 20x minus 8. Now the first step would be to look for a greatest common factor. Well, every term here isn't divisible by the same number. I can't divide 5 by 2, but I can divide the rest of these by 2. They don't all have variables in them, so I can't pull out a variable from each one. So there is no greatest common factor for this polynomial. Next we would look for perfect square trinomials or difference of squares. But this one has four terms and is not a perfect square or a difference of squares. We do have more than three terms, so we would try factoring by grouping. If we do that, we'll take these two terms first. If we're looking at 5x cubed plus 2x squared, I can pull out a greatest common factor of x squared. If I do that, I'll have x squared times 5x plus 2. Now I have to look at my other two terms. I have a negative 20x minus 8. On this one, I can factor out a 4 or a negative 4 from both of these terms. If I do that, I'll have negative 4 times 5x plus 2. Well, if I have x squared times 5x plus 2 minus 4 times 5x plus 2, I can factor out a 5x plus 2 from both of these new terms that I have. So I'll end up with 5x plus 2 times x squared minus 4. So I have successfully factored this by grouping. I look at my two terms here. I have 5x plus 2. I don't think I can factor that one any further. My other one is x squared minus 4. Well, this is the difference of squares. Here I have a x squared, and I'm subtracting, well, 4 is a perfect square of 2, so I'm subtracting 2 squared. Since this is a difference of squares, that means I can factor this into an x plus 2 times x minus 2. So my final factored form then would be 5x plus 2 times x plus 2 times x minus 2. So when you're given a polynomial to factor, always try to find a greatest common factor first, then look for any special patterns like difference of squares or perfect square trinomials. If you have more than three terms, especially if you have 
more than three terms and the number of terms you have are even, you can try grouping. Otherwise, you have to use standard binomial factoring. And that completes the tutorial on using all methods to factor.